A few months ago, I looked up at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory from the Berkeley campus and saw this huge dome-shaped building. And I wondered, what the heck is this building? So I looked it up and it turns out that this building is the advanced light source, one of the most advanced pieces of scientific infrastructure ever made. So within ten thousandths of a millionth of a second, we have to capture whether the electron is on this side or on that side of a distance that's 10 to 100,000 times shorter than the width of a human hair. So naturally we were curious. We wanted to see what this was all about, with the cameras of course so that we could document the whole process and they told us yes. So join us on this exclusive look inside the advanced light source where we show you what it is, how it works, and what it's being used for. The ALS is one of the brightest X-ray sources ever made. While our minds often connect X-rays to the compact machines tucked away in dentist offices, the ALS defies expectations with its colossal 300-foot diameter. Unlike the broad floodlight of a dentist X-ray, the ALS operates as a precision instrument akin to a laser. Our electron beam is very, very small. It's about the thickness of a human hair. But in that cone, the radiation is about a billion times brighter than the sun. It's much brighter than any other X-ray source you could think of. While the ALS is most renowned as a soft X-ray light source, it can produce a far wider range than just X-rays, enabling an equally wide range of scientific research. For example, infrared light was used to uncover more information about the chemical composition of mummy bones, giving us new insights into the diet of ancient Egyptians. Ultraviolet rays revealed how benzene rings are formed under ultra-high pressures, which may enable the production of cleaner combustion engines. And X-rays shed new light on how electrons move through semiconductors, which may lead to more efficient and cost-effective solar panels. These are just a few of the thousand experiments published per year at the ALS. The ALS generates light by accelerating electrons around a curved path. Electromagnetic radiation generated this way is known as synchrotron radiation. We start out with a chunk of metal that would fit in the palm of my hand. So we heat that up to 1000 degrees Celsius, which causes electrons to boil off. And we send them down a linear accelerator and we like our abbreviation, so we call it the LINAC. And that speeds them up, but at that point, the electrons are not going fast enough. So then we send them into the booster ring, and that gets the electrons up to 99.99999% the speed of light. When electrons are going that fast, what we do is we have these magnets that force the electrons around a curve, and that gives off photons. The X-rays travel down 40 beam lines, reaching numerous end stations where scientists do their research. So right here we have, this is the actual tubing for the beam. The beam comes in here and we have basically this chamber that's set up where we evacuate all of the air in there and we can kind of put in um, very specific conditions. Once the x-rays actually hit and interact with the sample, the electrons go through basically a tiny hole in the cone in there and they are shot through to our analyzer, and that's how we measure the actual energy that they have. So this is the screen that we're usually looking at as we're taking data, and this picture here is actually showing us uh, what the detector image looks like inside of uh, the end station. And so this big bright spot here is actually the signal from the x-rays being scattered off of the sample. So everything is controlled and monitored through here. If you lose the beam, you will hear this. If PG&E doesn't deliver constant current, we're gonna lose the beam. If any of magnets lose water, we're gonna lose the beam. If network is not working, we're gonna lose the beam. If, if vacuum is not good, we're gonna lose the beam. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing amount of data, and you have like, like how many monitors is this? Like, Don't forget those there too, yes. Yeah, there are like 16, I can see 16 monitors. Each, yeah, each presenting there's... different data. In the next few years, the ALS will become even brighter. Lawrence Berkeley National Lab is set to begin construction on a $590 million hardware upgrade to the ALS, a project referred to as the ALSU. I just said, oh, we have the best uh, facility in the world, but we cannot sit down on that. We want to take the existing storage ring, remove it completely, and replace uh, with uh, the present state of the art. We, we are going uh, to increase uh, this, uh, this parameter, the, the brightness, by two, three orders of uh, magnitude. 
with X-rays 100 to 1,000 times brighter than before. The upgraded ALS promises to shed light on new details, unresolvable by current hardware. Once we can get brighter and brighter X-rays, we're able to get that much more information out of our sample faster. Say if we see something happens really quickly, but then it gets kind of clogged up by another process, then we can think, okay, let's try to uh, make this process less dependent on that. Or what's a way in which we can kind of speed this other thing up so that the whole thing moves faster. Making observations is a fundamental part of the scientific process. It is with these observations that we are able to make theories about how our world works, and ultimately confirm or refute our theories once they have been made. The ALS is the ultimate example of this, allowing us to observe well beyond what we otherwise could. Time scales on the order of a billionth of a second, and length scales just a few nanometers across. And that, I think, is really cool. Thank you guys for watching our video on the Advanced Light Source, and thank you to the LVNL staff for helping us produce this video. If you're ready for more content by the Daily Cal, make sure to hit subscribe down below. Thank you. Bye bye.